Hi everyone, Paul from Lightbox Architecture. I uh, hope you're all well. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about garden rooms and garden offices. These seem to be really popular uh, topic at the minute. Um, so with the corona pandemic that's happened, um, everybody's evolved how they work. Uh, and many of you are now working at home. Um, I think businesses have found that this works really well and the productivity has moved up and this is good for business and potentially we're starting to utilise some of those online technologies that we've always had but we've just never really used. So businesses are reporting more productivity and this is also helping employees that you're able to have a bit more work-life balance. Uh, which is really good for both the business and, and for yourselves. So with this increase in home working, and I think generally we'll see how this will move in the future towards more home working for businesses. You're going to need an office space or somewhere to work. Nobody wants to work on the kitchen table uh, with the kids and everything else. So you need that space where you can concentrate, you can sit down and, and that is your working environment. This is why garden offices have become really popular. So what do we need to do as far as, as planning? You know, what are the planning rules around garden offices? Well, firstly, I'll always say it's, it's best to check with your local planning department as to what their rules are around garden rooms. This is something we can check for you, but there, there are certain things that you can do with permitted development, uh, but it depends on whether you live in a conservation area or particularly if you've got a building that was listed. So it's always best to check with your local planning department, which is a simple phone call. So for your garden room to fall under what we class as permitted development so that you don't need planning permission necessarily, it would have to conform to the following rules. So the building has to, if it's within two metres of the boundary, then your maximum height for your building is going to be two and a half metres to the eaves. So that's measuring from your ground level up to potentially where your fascia board will be. Now, if your building you're proposing is more than two metres, so two metres or more from the boundary, and this is from any boundary, then potentially then you can go up to three metres to the eaves for a flat roof, or you can go to four metres to the ridge with a pitched roof. So when we talk about pitched roof, we're talking about a dual pitch roof where the roof will go up and back down on the other side. So th there are some set rules with permitted development that we need to conform to in order to make this uh, garden room fit in within permitted development rights. Now also you can't take up more than 50% of, of your existing garden space so that's really important. Now the building also can't be classed as a dwelling so I know that people like to have annexed buildings where you're looking after elderly parents. Now these can't form a dwelling on its own with uh, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, so essentially it's its own uh, enclosed living environment. So the best thing to do is, is check this out with planning. So you, you can check out these details on planning portal. So if you go onto Google and type in planning portal, you can have a look at what the rules are around permitted development for yourself. Now we can provide lawful development certificates where we put forward your proposal and we will draw up what that proposal is. We will submit that to planning and we will be requesting what's called a certificate of lawful development. So that means in the future, should you come to sell your property or if the neighbours have any questions or they're not happy potentially with, with what you've built, that you can then tell those people that this has been approved by the local authority and you do have a certificate in place for the, the garden room that you've, you've built. So next question is building troll. So what's building trolls take on these garden offices? Well, generally, if a building is less than 30 square metres within your, your garden, such as a, at your garden office, then it doesn't necessarily fall within building control. So there's no need to put in a building control application for these types of works. Now, that doesn't mean that it doesn't fall under the building regulations. So there are still things that you need to ensure as, as part of the structure that will conform to building regulations. Now, you anything that you build up to 30 square metres, you wouldn't necessarily need to put a building control application in. Obviously anything over 30 square metres then falls into the building control category and therefore you would need to make an application. And the building would then need to be constructed to conform to current building regulations. 
Now one of the things that you need to be aware of is where you're building up towards the boundary with these garden offices that the material you use it needs to be com a combustible material. That means it needs to have 30 minutes fire resistance. Now it doesn't mean that you have to build the room out of uh, block as opposed to timber, uh, which obviously block has a natural fire resistance, where timber is more susceptible to, to fire. It just means that you need to make sure that the, the material is, uh, has got some kind of 30 minute fire resistance. Now that could be a varnish or a lacquer on the timber, that could be an intermittent paint that gives you 30 minute fire resistance, that could be something like using a 125 uh, mm fire line board uh, or a, a fire resistant board in part of the construction. Now I would always suggest that you speak to Building Control regarding these details to make sure that you are conforming to building regulations. Now one of the other stipulations from Building Control is that the accommodation such as garden room, garden office, doesn't have any sleeping accommodation. If it does have some sleeping accommodation then you will need to make a Building Control application. We think that this is going to be really popular moving forward with the change in how we work. So garden offices we're going to see become a lot more popular. So if you've got a garden office in mind, give us a call, we can have a chat with you, we can go through whether you would like to do a lawful development certificate and whether or not your particular development falls within planning or building control. And due to the changes in circumstances and the way that we're working, we've seen a, a real uplift in garden offices that clients are looking for. This is something that we can help you with to make sure that it falls within planning and building control uh, regulations, rules, and that you get the best use of your space for your garden office. Now, if you've got a garden office in mind, you can contact us at info at lightboxarchitecture.co.uk. Check out our details on www.lightboxarchitecture.co.uk or simply pick up the phone, give us a call 024 76 629 192 and we can have a chat with you or put one of our free online consultations and we can have a chat about your ideas for your garden office. Thanks for watching and hope this helps and don't forget click the subscribe button on the bottom of our videos and follow Lightbox Architecture. We'll be updating you every week with some new videos. Hope this has been helpful. Thank you.